Vine Street Antiques sits on the main drag of the biggest road in the center of the Salt Lake Valley. But where else except in full view of the whole world would you expect to find some of the most unique vintage and antique items in Utah? And who else besides proprietor Jerry Warren, also known as Rusty, could be cool enough to run it. I love meeting the people and doing the investigating when they bring something in and working with different people to find out what it's worth, its history, and what even the part of selling is fun. See what we can do with it. Rusty says stuff in a community used to stay in a community, but now with the online buying sites, a lot of stuff moves out of the community. Of course, that also means a lot of stuff not germane to that community moves in, but that doesn't make the competition any easier. You have people that sell on eBay, there's people that sell on Craigslist, there's people that sell on KSL, right. there's people that do our business, plus, you know, um, home businesses, that boutiques and stuff, which are really popular now, too. Right. So there's a lot of competition for good merchandise. There's a lot of miscellaneous merchandise, but good merchandise, there's not enough out there. Rusty says the antique dealers in the valley are pretty tight, so much so that a few years ago, they formed the Utah Antique Dealers Association. They did that for two reasons. First, to get organized as a group and to run themselves by a set of standards. And secondly, to have a bigger voice when it comes to legislation and political issues. Regarding the image, Richard Pitzock, who has worked with Vine Street Antiques and known Rusty for years, says Warren is very serious about ensuring the store, which is really a mall for nearly 70 other dealers, runs itself ethically and professionally. He demands that, you know, the store is clean at all times, uh, that people do not misrepresent things, that, you know, if you bring something in, that's what it is, not something it is not. And the prices have to be reasonable. Regarding legislation, the antique dealers group have shown their value in dealing with an issue that has kept them busy for the last several years. There is a bill pending that would put antique dealers under the same restrictions to hold merchandise as pawn shops. It's a reaction by lawmakers to a belief that thieves are selling stolen goods at antique dealers as well as at pawn shops. And although its intention is to slow the sale of specialty items like jewelry and coins, Antique dealers say it'll kill their business because it could put time limits on everything under their roof. And at Vine Street Antiques, that's a lot of stuff. So for now, all dealers like Rusty can do is focus on having stuff that bring people through the door. Among them, games, novelty items, and the new craze in steampunk. In fact, all of his and every other antique dealer's merchandise represents a delicate balance between what the seller wants to sell it for and what buyers like Rusty want to buy it for. And sometimes that can create some tension. Well, they're trying to make the most money they can out of their merchandise, right. but we're also in the business that we need to make money too. Right. And they misunderstand that um, all of our information, we've taken a long time to learn this, and they think they can just walk in and just say, well, how much is this worth? Right. You know, and so a lot of times when we say, you know, we have to charge them, they get upset. But that's why Warren says he offers free appraisals once a year. It's a compromise to an increasingly savvy public in an increasingly competitive business. Where, if you're lucky, you can still find some of the coolest stuff in the world. I'm Don Merrill.